Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webcast. Just have a couple of housekeeping items uh, to, to take care of, uh, first thing. Um, you can submit questions uh, throughout the webcast. Um, there is a questions button uh, along the top of, of the screen. We also have an attachment, a white paper, um, that, you can, that you can download from this webcast. This webcast is being recorded, and we will be providing the recording to you afterwards. With that, I would like to turn it over to our moderator, Seamus McGillicuddy, Senior Research Analyst with Enterprise Management Associates. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today, greetings. Uh, we are happy to have you join us for our expert panel discussion on software-defined wide area networking and what it takes to be truly successful with this new and innovative networking technology. My name is Seamus McGillicuddy and I am the Senior Analyst for Networking Research at Enterprise Management Associates where I conduct research into how enterprises plan, build, and operate their wide area, local area, uh, data center networks. I'm joined today by Frederic Estienne, an information technology management professional with more than 25 years of experience in the IT industry, specializing in enterprise architecture and technology innovation in the service provider communications, telecommunications space, with a focus these days on new technologies like network functions virtualization and software-defined networking. Also, we have Paul Kohler, who is Director of Technology Partnerships and Alliances at Viptela. He has two decades of experience in the networking and cloud industry at such companies as Cisco Systems, Netcom, Keynote Systems, and VMware, where he has worked in product management and strategic partnership roles. And then finally, we have, uh, we have Tim Deep, who is the Director of Product Management at CA Technologies, He's responsible for the network performance management products. He joined CA in 2014 to lead the development of the new software product, CA Virtual Network Assurance. <clears throat> and previously, Tim spent 10 years with Juniper working on the MX series routers and network functions virtualization, also known as NFV. I'm sure most of you have heard of that. Uh, so we're going to be doing a, a uh, panel discussion on, on what's happening in the software-defined wide area networking world. But before we do that, I'm just going to spend a few minutes talking about some drivers of change in enterprise WANs. Uh, I conducted some end-user research uh, last year on what's happening in the wide area network and found some interesting things that can explain why enterprises are moving fairly quickly uh, towards software-defined wide area networking technologies. First of all, no surprise to any of you probably, uh, applications are migrating to the cloud. We did some research uh, on megatrends in networking in addition to wide area networking trends, uh, and those megatrends uh, findings revealed that 44% of all traffic on corporate networks is, re is sourceable, traceable to public cloud activity, applications that have migrated into the external cloud. We've also found uh, that 55% of enterprises allow remote sites to access public clouds directly. And this represents a shift from architectures in, uh, not so long ago where uh, remote sites usually accessed, accessed public clouds through a data center or a remote hub of some kind that allowed them to apply, apply security policies, uh, controls, access controls, and so forth. Um, and no surprise, the top barrier to this direct cloud access is resistance from security operations. Uh, they're simply not comfortable with uh, this shift in architecture that is required for direct cloud access. Number two barrier is actually an architectural issue. Security infrastructure is too centralized to support this direct cloud access. We're also seeing a lot of growth in the wide area network. Our surveys of distributed enterprises, that is enterprises with more than um, 10 sites connected to a WAN, they said their number of sites on their WAN are growing, 83% to be precise, said their organizations are adding more sites to the wide area network. 
and 22% of them described that growth as at a rate of more than 25%, which is pretty significant. And then also device growth is an issue. 84% of these enterprises say that the number of endpoints connecting in the remote sites is going up. And while laptops and personal computers are, are the leading driver of that growth in endpoint devices, um, the Internet of Things is also a significant source of that growth, which adds more complexity to the picture. Um, those IoT devices include HVAC systems and smart lighting, uh, um, point-of-sale systems, and you know, all manner of other things, including research and development lab equipment is also a major issue. Also, uh, we're seeing that, uh, you know, you, most of you are probably doing this as well to some extent. Uh, managed WAN services like MPLS are being replaced as a primary connectivity option by the Internet. 74% uh, of organizations said they're doing this today, and the drivers are not necessarily cost. It's uh, connectivity to the cloud, superior performance, which tells me that a lot of them have managed WAN services connections in areas where the infrastructure is aging, not modern enough to deliver reliable performance, and also higher bandwidth options. There's just better bandwidth options. We all know this. Uh, but MPLS will persist. The changeover from MPLS affects only about 45% of sites, uh, according to our surveys. Um, in the enterprise space, they're only switching over 45% of sites. And forwarding policies are going to require MPLS remain in place. You know, so they, they prefer to forward um, uh, storage replication traffic, uh, big data collection and, and analysis traffic, uh, enterprise resource planning applications. They want to forward that over MPLS, but they also have a lot of secure web apps, uh, HTTPS-based enterprise applications that they want to send over the Internet. And that creates a need for both connectivity options in a lot of sites. But network teams are struggling with complexity and cost. We asked them to name their top uh, challenges to successful WAN operations. And the number one issue is skills and knowledge shortages. And they just don't have enough guys that can um, uh, do CLI across all these different routers, especially as sites are growing and traffic is growing and devices are increasing. They're also dealing with network hardware and software problems, which implies that they're trying to sweat their assets a little too long probably and their hardware is starting to age noticeably. And they're dealing with rising costs and a lack of budget, which means they need a more effective solution um, than what they're doing today. So we're seeing some requirements for a new wide area network. Based on the, what we just covered here, centralized control and management would help them a lot, especially you know, dealing with the complexity and the skill shortage. Hybrid connectivity, they need uh, technology that can help them with uh, forwarding applications over specific connection types, um, Internet, uh, MPLS, maybe even LTE and other things like that. Uh, they need secure cloud access. They need infrastructure consolidation to address the cost and also complexity. Uh, and they, uh, want, they're going to want service assurance across both the new and legacy infrastructure since both are going to be in their environments for some time to come. So with that, uh, we're going to turn to the panel now and, and uh, discuss the, how, uh, how these issues apply to the new technology available to you today, including software-defined wire and networking. So first off, why software-defined when and why now? Um, I'll just say quickly that, um, you know, and also what are the business or technical drivers that are, and what are the barriers of adoption to this technology for some customers? We probably should cover that too. But first off, I'll just say, you know, one of the big drivers here is complexity. Software-defined WAN helps with complexity. The, the, the network's getting more complex due to a variety of factors. And software-defined WAN offers that centralized control um, and management capability and, and uh, that, that can reduce complexity and help in a variety of ways. Our research at EMA has shown that the top three business drivers for SD-WAN adoption are improved application performance, direct cloud access, and improved security. But I'm going to turn that over to the panel to see what they have to say. So, uh, Fred, first off, what are your thoughts on this issue? Hey, good morning. Um, so, um, the, the, the customer today that uh, we are seeing going to this uh, SD-1 approach so far, at least in Canada, do that for two main reasons. And this is, I would say, a snapshot at uh, uh, this point of time. The first one is really for uh, redundancy. So the customer wants to improve the site availability, the diversity of the connectivity. So they do that and they use the internet connectivity because it's, it's cheaper. So it's a low cost perspective and in order to have additional links. Um, 
The second uh, I would say aspect is time to market. So one of the um, main issues that we we've seen in the past with uh, MPLS is we need the time to get the connection up and so on and so forth. With this uh, SD1 deployment and uh, whatever is the vendor is time to market because what you need basically is an uh, internet link and you can deploy your site uh, on a timely manner. That's mainly the two aspects that we at least at this time, can can understand from our customers. Okay, thanks, Fred. Paul, what's the perspective with you, you know, coming from Vitella? Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Seamus, and uh, thanks for having me on the webinar. Um, yeah, in, in regards to the question, um, I would say just as you outlined, uh, Seamus, uh, and also uh, uh, Frederick uh, also alluded to, um, the big drivers are this huge movement to the cloud. Enterprises are moving to the cloud, and uh, you know applications are using SaaS, so O365 and Salesforce. Workloads are also moving to the cloud, so infrastructure as a service, uh, AWS and Azure, and then storage also. Files are moving to the cloud, so uh, Dropbox and Box. And then also security. So enterprises are moving from an appliance-based uh, uh, approach to a cloud-based uh, approach. So, so uh, say, for example, Zscaler or OpenDNS, uh, cloud-based uh, firewall and security solutions. And, and then also, as you alluded to, that big migration from uh, MPLS to Internet. You also pointed out that uh, MPLS, of course, will still remain and continue on. But in many cases, uh, customers want to um, add additional bandwidth, and they need to do it quickly, um, and Internet is, is just perfect for that. In other cases, some enterprises are moving wholesale to, to Internet for cost savings reasons, and then also for the ability to be able to deploy uh, those circuits a lot more quickly. Um, and as you also alluded to, the existing solutions are highly inadequate, um, and, and they just don't fit the, meet, the need. They have, you know, uh, solutions out there for uh, SMB-type uh, deployments, but when you start talking about hundreds and thousands of sites, um, oftentimes it requires too much uh, uh, knowledge and too much skills within the IT department, um, and therefore it's really these catalysts or these conditions have created the, the right um, uh, uh, fertile ground for SD-WAN to really prosper and, and really flourish. And so you know, for, for us here at Bipteller, we've created a solution where we provide a unified, secure overlay fabric. Um, so it's a consistent fabric across all uh, the, uh, the WAN transport. There's also that single interface to uh, distribute configuration changes throughout your network simultaneously. Uh, it scales to enterprise uh, uh, requirements, and it's also cloud-based. So your controller elements are uh, available via the cloud, so it takes also advantage of the cloud. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Tim, what's your per per perspective on this? Yeah, so um, I I echo the the same thing that um, Paul just uh, talked about, which is the whole um, maturity, the continuation of the cloud migration. Um, in addition to that, that's something that we actually do see with with our customer base, the the proliferation of apps uh, due to the application economy. And, and as, as a result of that, uh, the wide area network needs to be uh, more application savvy now. It needs to be able to guarantee to be able to a certain uh, network performance down to the individual apps, particularly as more mission critical apps are being introduced to the cloud. Okay, thank you. All right, next topic, uh, challenges to successful for defined WAN implementation. So in, in this topic, we want to talk about what are the challenges you predict or are hearing from your customers and being successful at realizing the benefits of software defined WAN technology, such as cost savings, improved security, et cetera. Uh, from my perspective, I, I think one issue that's come up is cultural change. People using software defined technologies report some resistance or at least uh, per, uh, perplexity. Uh, 
among network engineers who are accustomed to doing things in a certain way, who've built their careers on a very specific skill set, such as CLI, uh, might become, that might become less relevant with, with SD-WAN implementations. So you, you need to train them, uh, get them in, uh, involved, um, sort of transition them to a new uh, model. Uh, EM, EMA research has also found that software-defined WAN implementations rarely encompass an entire enterprise, at least in the short to midterm. It might shift over the long term. Uh, but the, the typical deployment affects between 40 and 60 percent of sites. Uh, legacy network architecture is going to persist, and you got to make sure that your sites can communicate. That means um, the SD-WAN solution needs to be able to maybe communicate with your uh, legacy technologies in some ways. Uh, you also need to integrate monitoring and management of those legacy and, and, and SD-WAN sites. Um, but Frederic, what, what are you seeing from the service provider side of things? Well, from from a service provider side, I would say that the challenge is uh, from a legacy implementation. That means SD1 is, is a technology that is is more complex. So basically, that in the skill set required for operating those technology is quite different, uh, and this puts a lot of pressure on the uh, internal uh, network IT organization. So what we see so far is uh, companies are looking for outside support to get either their implementation or the day to support of those technology because um, they don't have, the, the, they are not trained yet. I mean, and this come back to a maturity issue, right? So this is, this question, if you ask me to see this question in maybe a year, two years from now, it will be a total and different uh, uh, answer. But today, that means we, the technology is there, is moving in the right side, but I would say the operationalization of the technology is moving slower than that. And you said about the, uh, because people still go to a, a CLI command and so on and so forth. So it's, I, I would say the pressure is on those teams. Um, another aspect is, I would say security. That mean even the, the, the SD1 solutions uh, offer security solutions. That mean at the base, that means you just expose your core application to the internet. That means you had MPLS in the past, where basically this is a VPN tunnel between two sites and uh, on, I would say, a private uh, network, which is a, a carrier network, right? So now the thing is you open that to, to the internet. And we know that means the internet is opportunity to people to improve their skill set in terms of uh, hacking something new. So the thing is, when you, you, you open your core network, your ERP, your CRM to this uh, type of network, that means the security is a, is a huge aspect that needs to be taken in consideration. That means people need to add to the NOC solution that they have in place today to manage their MPLS, a SOC, a security operation center, that will take care of the security events with firewall, IPS at the branch level, and to be able to 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 make sure that uh, the the network stays secure, some company today what they do is they don't even offer internet at the branch level. That means they would back the internet traffic to the core to the uh, corporate network in order to ensure that the security is taken care of by the corporation. So this is, I would say, the two main aspects we can see uh, at this point of time. Yeah, I concur with you there. Our research at EMA has shown that. Roughly a third of early adopters of software-defined WAN are uh, outsourcing implementation to their service providers, and, other th and, and a third of them are also outsourcing monitoring and management and troubleshooting of their software-defined WAN implementations to their service providers. Um, Paul, uh, what's, what's your perspective on this from Viptela? Yeah, so um, I, I would say that uh, a few of the factors here uh, or challenges would be, uh, one, would be choosing the right solution or, you know, one of the better solutions. And the reason being is that there are 30 uh, different companies uh, that claim SD-WAN solutions, and, and uh, is, that number is increasing with every week. Um, and there isn't a long history and knowledge base generally out there on 
what the differences are between the solutions. People haven't had the time to really uh, try and deploy those various different solutions. And so, um, you know, they, they don't know as much. And uh, the sales and the marketing from all these uh, various different vendors are oftentimes uh, pretty strong. The PowerPoint slides are pretty strong. Um, uh, but, you know, you, ne you need to really uh, actually test and uh, do a proof of concept and deploy it uh, to really understand quickly, uh, know what the big, big differences are between the various solutions. And, of course, that takes a little time to, to, to pull that off. Um, I would also uh, echo what you said, Seamus, uh, that culture and uh, uh, oftentimes IT and networking departments have the tendency to uh, be reticent and reluctant to, to make the, the switch to the cloud, to SD-WAN, um, because uh, they have jobs to uh, protect and a knowledge base uh, and education uh, to, to uh, protect. Um, and then lastly, I would say just transforming, you know, SD-WAN in essence is an, an enabler for an enterprise to unlock um, the full potential of the cloud to, uh, to really take advantage of uh, all these various different aspects of the cloud that we detailed, as well as, uh, you know, uh, have that flexibility with WAN transport. However, that is a huge undertaking. It's a huge multi-stage uh, Project, you know, when when you really kind of list it out, you've got your you're rolling out a new SD WAN solution, uh, WAN transports, applications, workloads, storage, uh, your security firewall, and all of these things. Of course, uh, you can't just flip a switch and suddenly transform your network. And so, therefore, it needs to be managed as a project in uh, multiple stages and done in a methodical, well thought out uh, way. And trying to uh, take it all on at the same time, uh, you know, can can of course uh, uh, lead you to uh, problems. Okay, thanks, Paul. Uh, Tim, what's your perspective on challenges from CA? Yeah, you know, the, I definitely think there's there's two challenges with uh, with SD-WAN deployment, simply because of the the newness of this type of technologies. Um, so. The operations team has the learning curve to deal with. And then on top of that, there's there are definitely many vendor-specific variants that they have to deal with. Um, and also, last but not least, is the lack of viable operational monitoring systems out there. Um, in our um, endeavor in this area, we, we come up with a few things uh, that customers to consider as they uh, look to deploy SD-WAN. First uh, is to be able to monitor. Don't don't give up on your old WAN because your your traditional WAN is still the underlay, the foundation of this new SD-WAN. So we encourage customers to monitor the, the, the traditional WAN as well as the, the SD-WAN and be able to correlate the two. The second is that uh, FD1 introduces automations and application-based intelligence, and and this type of uh, software intelligence is still new and is not foolproof. So there needs to be a monitoring system that can help you understand whether the the automation is working, whether the application experience is actually improving as result FD1 as well as whether the, the policies that you're creating for, for SD-WAN are the right policies. And this is where FDA, we're introducing analytics to help solve uh, this, these type of challenges. All right, thanks, Tim. Speaking of analytics, that's a nice segue into our next topic, which is the role of analytics in SDN architecture. Um, you know, where do we see the role of analytics in today's SDN world, software-defined data centers, uh, software-defined WAN deployments? So I can just speak to this briefly and say that we, we at EMA have seen that network infrastructure teams, are, uh, you know, roughly half of them want to or at least currently are doing um, some sort of analytics initiative uh, where they're taking uh, data from the network and applying uh, Applying, applying analytical technologies to it, uh, big data analytics, maybe AI technologies, machine learning. 
Uh, and this, this can help them apply automation to IT infrastructure, which can have a variety of benefits depending on the enterprise's comfort level with automation. For instance, analytics can allow a software-defined network to take closed-loop actions in response to performance problems or security incidents. Our research has found that um, there are top, three top use cases for uh, network analytics in the enterprise today. The first one is enhanced security monitoring, so using analytics to um, you know, detect anomalies uh, and respond to anomalies, uh, uh, see, look for patterns of behavior that can suggest a security problem. Um, they're also interested in, in applying this analytics to optimizing their networks. In terms of automation, this could be an example where an SDN solution can adjust the infrastructure, uh, adjust um, flows on the network to respond to congestion or uh, you know, trends in traffic, you know, that could indicate, uh, you know, a burst in activity on a specific application. They can, you know, reroute traffic in a way to address that congestion. Uh, we also, uh, the number three use case for advanced analytics in our research is business process optimization. So in this, this instance, uh, network operations might have analytics tools in place that can help them identify inefficiencies and in how lines of business are operating, and in an SDN environment, a software-defined wide area network, for instance, where application intent is often integrated into the network management workflows, the opportunities for this are greater. They can, they can, um, they can connect applications to business processes more readily when they're working in business logic rather than CLI. Uh, Frederic, what's uh, your perspective on this from the service provider side of things? Uh, Fred, I think you might be muted. Yes. So, so sorry about that. So, the the, the SD one technology is is a new approach. Um, basically, we come from a, a device based um, monitoring solution or management solution to an ecosystem solution. So, basically, that means what we have it, up down monitoring is I would say over, and this is over for a couple of years now. But now it's even even more than, than used to be because you have to deal with a total a large ecosystem that you will, I would say, deal with everything in every component. Uh, I think we mentioned and Tim mentioned that as well from an application perspective. That means we are not seeing packets and bits and bytes. It's application, is QoS, is flows, and so on and so forth. So that means uh, it's, it's a, a different ways of I would say managing networks. It's I would say more uh, going to the layer seven than it used to be. Um, in addition of that, is networking decisions are taken by the technology. That means your controller, your application, is taking decision to change something, route the traffic from one to another, based on KPIs and measurement that is done on the on the fly. Um, and this without the change ticket, for, for sure, right? So in the past, that means we had an IP enabler. That means we received a change ticket, we enabled the change, and uh, the, the person who was entering the CLI command to do the change. This is over. This is not something that is done anymore in this uh, SD1 concept. You have auto healing capability as well. So the thing is, what is critical is the analytics, because the analytics is the only way that will be able to uh, provide you indicators, uh, measures, a report to, I would say, and I put that in bracket, keep some control on what is going on on the, uh, on the SD1. Uh, as well as, and I think Tim mentioned that to introduce this, uh, this question is, are we sure that what has been implemented is, is the right way? Do we have to, uh, to maybe improve this in order to make use of, better use of our network? Uh, not overloading the, 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 the link or not over-provisioning the link. So the thing is we need to be able to do a comparison between what the technology is doing versus how the technology is behaving. And analytics is, is I would say, the element and the answer to this question. And the last point I would say that mean a key factor for network incident is the fact that a large number of incidents are direct result of a change in the network. So we won't be able to see a change ticket in, our, uh, in the uh, management system anymore. So we have to go back to the analytics to understand, oh, yes, this has been done because of that, and it has been done at this time. 
and by uh, for this reason. So analytics is the answer to the question. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, Paul, what are your thoughts here? Yes, uh, so I'd say um, with the increasing number of uh, third-party solutions uh, from moving to the cloud and then uh, increasing bandwidth, increasing circuits, um, increasing number of elements, so uh, IoT devices, uh, remote workers, smartphones, um, and then increasing number of security threats. Uh, the amount of data is greater, and therefore the uh, the need for analytics uh, exponentially increases. Um, and uh, on our side, we are providing uh, analytics. Uh, you know, we, we track the application user data and trends. Uh, currently, we just um, we expose only the customer's uh, data only to that individual customer. Um, future enhancements we're working on, uh, you know, sort of around forecasting. Um, but uh, it's definitely a, a growth area, um, and uh, you know, uh, uh, it's uh, you know, it's, it's definitely in need given the increasing uh, number of elements and number of vendors from that, this big move to the cloud. Okay, great. And Tim, uh, where, what are you seeing around analytics? Yeah, we we, de we we do see a lot of uh, need for analytics. Uh, the the um, the topic that you and Paul and Fred talked about definitely resonate. Um, you know, security, operational, as well as the business-driven needs for analytics. But we also think that there's just by the nature of SDN or SD WAN that analytics is needed just to accomplish your your traditional type of uh, operational monitoring and 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 three there are three things that we um, we surmise that are important to consider as you look at uh, why analytics is needed for for SDN the first is is the the volume of data there's a ton of data in network being produced by network these days and therefore you need um, you need capabilities in analytics to search and find the right data. Um, second is the layers of complexity that SDN uh, introduces. SD-WAN by far is probably the simpler of uh, SDN implementation. If you look at NRV as well as data center virtualizations, you can see that there, these new architectures are built on multi-layer, independent, interdependent layers of uh, software on top of traditional network. So, so analytics is needed to unravel that. And then finally, it's just the dynamic nature of these networks. It, it's constantly changing, and it's not, it's not uh, fixed period changing. It's changing any time, rapid, slow. And, the, and and if you if you consider the changes and the volume of data and the many layers of relationship you have to track, it's not possible to do uh, traditional type of operational monitoring without applying analytics. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. All right. Uh, next topic of discussion is network operations evolution in the software-defined world. So. Um, specifically, how can network performance monitoring solutions evolve to ensure successful software-defined architecture deployments? So, EMA, sponsor, uh, EMA surveyed early adopters of software-defined network technologies about a little over a year ago, and we asked one of the questions we asked them was to identify uh, new requirements that they had for their monitoring and management tools uh, in an SDN environment. Uh, the, the ones that rose to the top is most important. Specifically, they wanted visibility into on-demand capacity changes um, as networks became become more dynamic uh, and agile in a software-defined environment. They they need those they need their tools to be able to recognize those changes and adjust monitoring when necessary. Specifically, this means you know uh, they may no longer be their monitoring tools may be uh, configured to monitor elements of their infrastructure that. Uh, are no longer as critical as they were uh, based on changes, you know, shifting flows uh, across different paths, for instance. Uh, they also 
need better network path visualization. A lot of tools uh, do this today, but uh, with increased uh, network virtualization and hybrid networks with a mix of MPLS and broadband, and they they want uh, tools that can better visualize application paths um, as, as as you know if if you're service chaining multiple network functions in a branch office for instance you want to make sure that you know when you're tr monitoring and troubleshooting a, a service in a branch you can how can you see that the the traffic is that is flowing across all the network functions that you want them to. You know, the, the firewall is is it, is it flowing through the firewall? Is it you know is it throwing, flowing through your uh, virtual WAN optimization controller? Is it flowing through your um, uh, your your VPN terminator? Uh, things like that. Um, and then also they want additional reporting capabilities. Uh, first, they want to see reports on. SDN flow activity, how much bandwidth does a particular flow consume, and what's the typical packet size of that flow. They, and then they, they want the inverse of that. They want to see how uh, network conditions are affecting SDN flows. Uh, so is congestion at a certain site affecting your most critical application flows? Um, can you uh, make some changes to address that issue? You want to be able to see that quickly on a single dashboard. Um, Fred, what's your perspective on this? Well, as I said, I mean, now we are dealing with an ecosystem, and this is composed of multiple technology with lots of integration in between, uh, sometimes between multiple vendors or multiple technology. So hybrid networks is now a reality that means where we can go from one carrier to another, we can go from one vendor to another, either by acquisition or by cost. That mean, um, I mean, the loyalty to, to a technology is not anymore something that is a reality because SD1 open, it's like when we, we had in the past, I would say, the, uh, the notion of uh, free software or uh, this uh, kind of thing. And, and, and now we, we have the opportunity to find something everywhere. And I think Paul mentioned that, I mean, today it's all, I would say, 30 vendors that are pretending to be uh, as the one vendor. So the thing is, we have to deal with this panel from a carrier perspective. Um, also, that the, uh, the control of the SD1 network is performed by system, as I said, uh, with automated uh, capability, self-provisioning, and self-healing. So monitoring the solution is, 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 is quite important in terms of performance, and performance at the application level, at the flow level, as, as you just said. Um, also, that means, is, is the configuration that is automated that has been provisioned or has been done is still accurate? Because things change, right? You need to ensure that the config configuration performance is as per design or specs. So performance monitoring in the SD1 technology, I would say I named that the conscience of the technology. This is, uh, this is the only way that you can ensure that uh, your network is still is still valid, is still performing as per uh, we need. Tim mentioned that, I mean, the, the network are dynamic. Uh, what is true from one site is could be totally different for another one. I give you an example for a site that is, a, I would say, a domestic site with, uh, I would say, uh, legacy vendors for either internet or, or MPLS, where we may expect to have, I would say, between two to five change of link between during the day, right? So, and we may say that that's normal. But when you have a, a far end site that is not, uh, I would say, connected to uh, legacy vendors or connected via LTE or LG4, this site may shift the, 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 the link maybe 100 times a day. Is it that right or wrong? Maybe this is wrong or this is right because the thing is, under a change in the foreign country where the link is not good, that means is acceptable. But doing that in the domestic link is not. So the thing is you have to compose with different parameters where the rule from one is different to another. Okay, thanks, Fred. Uh, Paul, what are your thoughts uh, at the Tela? Yeah, I, I, I have three uh, thoughts on this. Uh, one is that uh, network management uh, applications like CA um, have to support more third-party 
uh, providers and solutions in the cloud, whether they be SaaS or infrastructure as a service or um, a, a cloud-based firewall uh, service. And so instead of everything being in-house and uh, uh, relying on the IT or networking department, um, you have to interface uh, with these uh, different uh, cloud sources and cloud providers. Um, secondly, it, it becomes increasingly important for the SD-WAN solution, or in, in my case, uh, VIPTELA, for that to have a complete uh, uh, integration with the uh, network management, and we're talking about CA here, so that VIPTELA to CA integration is crucial. And then finally, with the uh, SD-WAN solution, um, you're able to then, once your network operations have uh, um, diagnosed, if they've root caused and resolved, or, or they have determined uh, what the issue is and what the solution should be, taking advantage of uh, the SD-WAN architecture to dissipate a configuration change immediately out to the branches, because Essentially, with an SD-WAN solution, the branches are uh, where you're, you're, you have increasing control rather than a data center-centric uh, approach. You need to uh, distribute your network changes out to all of your branches throughout the enterprise as quickly as possible and simultaneously. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tim, uh, what's your perspective on, on, this, on this topic? Yeah, I um, I think that um, in 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 this new space, in in this SDN space and cloud and application economy, uh, is really necessary to um, work with vendors who can partner with other vendors. And, you know, to to Paul's point, um, the days of of uh, thinking that. You deploy a new architecture, and years later you can just find some monitoring tool because you can rely on some standardized SNMP MIPS or some data to be available so that you can just monitor and get data. I think that's 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 yesterday, and 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 you can see with the proliferation of SDN, SD WAN, and the pace of new technologies that that's coming out, uh, it really. It's important for, for customers to look for vendors who can partner with other vendors and work well with, with other vendors um, and really get ahead of, of the of the changes. And uh, and that's what we at CA strives to do is to work with lead, leaders uh, such as uh, Vipella and, and others to really uh, have a solution for monitoring for operations uh, ready in time uh, as, as customers deploy these new technologies, they'll have something useful for them to maintain the operational nature of, of the network. Great. All right, one last topic, um, DevOps approach for SD-WAN monitoring. Uh, more specifically, why do we think it's important for software vendors to build collaboration and, and innovation through partnering ecosystems? Um, I'm going to keep my response short because we're running short on time. I want to make sure we leave time for a few questions. But I'll just say that my advice to enterprises who are looking at software-defined WAN is that they need to have uh, very detailed conversations with their external partners, uh, specifically their monitoring vendors, uh, their network service providers, uh, their um, – their uh, uh, SD-WAN vendors and maybe even their cloud providers. Um, they want, this is this is an ecosystem, and they need to um, make sure that that all of their external partners are are on board with working together to pull this, to pull everything together um, for successful implementation. Um, but uh, I'm going to turn this to Fred. Uh, and Fred, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well. I think uh, today and maybe tomorrow that I mean uh, um, new technology are, are coming faster, sometimes complex, non mature uh, with a rapid customer adoption. Uh, service providers need to have a quicker solution in order to retain and attract customers. That's one of the key elements. Um, doing all of this by ourselves is not enough anymore. This is uh, uh, too long, too expensive. And also, that means the vendor 
uh, roadmap are sometimes too late. That means sometimes you see the technology, but nobody is available or has something available for that technology. Um, so new technology requires more advanced solution as well. So that's why the need is for multi-dimensional expertise where you need to have your customer and users, your vendors, your technology vendors, and your IT organization. So DevOps is, is the, 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 the better approach. Um, as always said, that means also often says, that means one uh, more brain is, is better than one. And uh, for us, uh, or for, from a, my perspective, I see that as a collaboration with a, a vendor partnership, resource sharing, so we can share people, labs, equipment, uh, expertise, and also uh, have a roadmap alignment. So that's, for me, the, the, the vision. Okay, thanks. Uh, Paul, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, so with the increasing number of uh, different providers and tools uh, uh, in the cloud, and then with this increasingly dynamic uh, environment, um, you know, it, it definitely, I, I uh, echo what both of you just said. Uh, it is very important, especially in regards to SD-WAN, that there's a full API support um, between the SD-WAN vendor and, and uh, network management. And, uh, you know, VipTeller, of course, we don't focus on uh, uh, NARC or network management. We don't pull in um, stats from uh, other third parties. We, we look to our network management uh, partners and ecosystem partners like CA to do that. Um, we do have a comprehensive and extensive uh, API uh, coverage that's fully documented, and CA has done an excellent job of uh, having a complete and comprehensive integration, very strong integration with Viptela. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, the kind of solution that, the, that we're offering with CA and Viptela does uh, provide a very important uh, solid building block and foundation for uh, building that sort of DevOps approach where you, where you have to pull in not just a VIP teller, but also these other third-party um, statistics and uh, uh, details um, and uh, information sources into uh, CA. Okay, great. Um, all right, well, uh, with that, uh, let's open up to questions. It looks like we have about five questions here so far. Let's see if we can cover them in time left. Um, how do you see, first question is, how do you see monitoring solutions contributing to the agility that is expected from SDN? Examples being self-healing, intelligent rerouting, network configuration change, et cetera. Anyone want to tackle that one? Yeah, I, I, can, I can take a stab at that, uh, Seamus. Um, I do see that uh, over time, um, just based on uh, our, our work with customers, that, um, you know, SDN is about automation. SD-WAN is about automation, right? And so monitoring has to be a part of the automation. Uh, with that said, I think it is, is, is a, um, you know, it's a journey. So it would take, um, it would take a long time to reach full automations of the entire network in terms of having that closed loop. Um, I think that the, the, the right uh, evolution would be to start with, uh, I, I believe Fred alluded to this before, is to use monitoring system to introduce the ability to self-validate, make sure that what is being automated is actually uh, – being provisioned properly onto the network. And then uh, similar to, uh, to how the other, the other uh, SDN use cases are dealing with is the concept of self-healing uh, and self-optimizing. So, so um, you know, introducing monitoring to close the loop of these automation uh, networks is really an important part of uh, the evolution of this technology. Great. Uh, next question is, who should I partner with to make sure I succeed with SD-WAN? Um, from my perspective, you, you, you need to um, – we, we see a couple different um, approaches to this. Uh, some want to lean heavily on their service providers, uh, 
their you know the provider of their ISP or their MPLS provider to really deliver a solution, a software-defined WAN solution to them. Others want to do it themselves, uh, and they may work with um, directly with uh, a software-defined WAN vendor or or, or their, that that vendor's channel to implement. Um, there's a lot of interest in outsourcing some aspects of operations when it comes to SD-WAN, although many others are relying on the tools that are native to the SD-WAN solution. Uh, others are using their existing tools, existing, asking vendors like CA to modify their tools to support uh, SD-WAN. Um, I, would, I would urge you to talk to your, uh, your, your monitoring vendors to make sure that they not only can connect or uh, integrate with your SD-WAN vendor's APIs, but also can, are extensible enough to present data in the ways that you need it presented um, and also integrate that operational visibility with whatever legacy technologies remain in place in your enterprise. Uh, does anyone else have any thoughts on, on this question of who they should partner with? Nope, okay. Um, all right, so we got some, some other questions here one just came into. Um, let's see, uh, what CA products support Viptela? That's probably the one for Tim. Yeah, so uh, CA performance management, uh, CA spectrum, uh, as well as CA virtual network assurance. Uh, so these these three products uh, form a solution that addresses performance, uh, uh, flow monitoring, as well as uh, device statistics, and then uh, with spectrum, the ability to handle fault. Okay. And yeah, and I, I'd another. echo, uh, I'd echo uh, what Tim just said. I'd say, uh, like I said before, the uh, integration between VIP Teller and CA Performance Management is a very comprehensive uh, integration, very, very strong. Um, and so, you know, I, I think anybody who deploys that that solution will be in a very good uh, standing. Here's a, here's a good question that just came in. Uh, what will the network architect's role be once software-defined WAN is fully deployed in the enterprise? Anyone want to tackle that one? Uh, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I mean, um, I think it will be the gatekeeper. That means the one that will make sure that uh, the solution is, is, is done properly and keep behaving properly. And that's why we come back to analytics. That means he is the one that will do the interpretation of the analytics and continue to fine tune the solution. Um, the good and the bad news is this solution is an evolution uh, technology. That means today we have SD1 implementation, but this will evolve. That means this technology will, will improve, will add the functionalities, will add more uh, capabilities as well. So I will say that mean it will be the, uh, the person that will need to go to, uh, I would say, more an innovation uh, perspective. So we spoke a lot about continuous evolu uh, innovation. That means we need to understand what is coming in those technology that will be available to either internal or external customers. Yeah, I'd like to ask you what. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I would like to uh, echo uh, what uh, Frederick uh, just said. Um, you know, I think uh, traditionally, unfortunately, uh, guys in the uh, networking and, and IT departments uh, get very bogged down with. Uh, you know, trying to troubleshoot uh, existing on-site tools or applications, appliances, uh, trying to upgrade them, uh, patch them, uh, licensing issues. All of that now gets handled, you know, pretty much in the cloud. And so you don't have to get bogged down in those things. And just like Frederick said, I think it uh, becomes a lot more uh, dynamic and you can unlock a lot more um, features and functionality for your organization. And so rather than being in a sort of defensive catch-up uh, situation, it's a bit more about, um, you know, determining what new features and functionality available in the cloud that you can now uh, uh, unlock and take advantage of. And, and uh, you know, how can you scale to even greater uh, numbers of users, number of devices, um, a number of sites, and, and, and so it becomes a bit more, uh, you know, focus on what really you'd like to, to uh, uh, work on and focus on rather than getting bogged down in 
these individual uh, appliance or application issues. Okay, great. Yeah, I, 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 yeah just, Go ahead. just very quick, I just want to add to what Paul said. Yeah, you know, we, we see the same thing, is that the, the role of the network architect is, is changing uh, from uh, less a day-to-day but more analytical, using an- analytics to look at how the network is is automating itself. Because at the end of the day, you know, the, the automation is not foolproof, right? So, um, and so I, you know, we do see that there's a there's a, a change in role, um, and in, in fact, it's an elevating. Is an elevation of the role to to use more sophisticated uh, software tools and to improve and optimize the network. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. Uh, that's all the time we're going to have. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, maybe we can reach out to you directly. But thank you all for uh, joining us today. I know I can speak for the entire team when I say that we hope you got some very useful information and guidance here for your current or future software-defined networking initiatives. If you haven't already, please take a moment to download the latest CA Technologies white paper in the attachments section of this webinar, which I believe is an EMA written white paper, so I can guarantee it's really good. Uh, And for more information on comprehensive traditional SDN and hybrid cloud networking, network monitoring, please visit ca.com slash performance management. Uh, Thank you again, and uh, everyone have a nice day.